Belay and Kendra returned from Silva Dorada and walked through the door late into the night. They were able to sleep a little on the plane, but after the whirlwind week they had, it just wasn't enough. The couple finally made it home and couldn't wait to sleep in their own bed, and who could blame them? It's one of the best feelings in the world, isn't it? The following morning, Kenja went to the kitchen to make breakfast. All of the artifacts that they found were awaiting his examination. He was excited to get to it, however, Filet was at the forefront of his thoughts that morning. And of course, the baby. The baby? Oh yeah, the baby. He remembered they were having a baby later that year. He almost forgot, it just didn't seem real. But where was this child going to sleep? There's no room here. Not even to add on to the existing house. They were going to have to move. He needed to bring this up to Filet and soon. Ah, oh, shoot. What about the degree? He flunked out just before they left for the honeymoon. And he wanted to re-enroll to finally earn his degree in history. He wanted to become a man his child could be proud of. He went over to the computer and looked at the scholarships and then applied. He also re-enrolled in university again. And now, to wait. A few weeks go by. They wake up bright and early. Flay awoke in her own bed, fully rested. She yawned and smelled the food Kenjo was making in the kitchen. As she started making her way downstairs, she placed her hand on her round belly and said, And how did you sleep, little one? Filet asked. She shrugged and headed downstairs. Filet decided to work at home that day, and Kenjo had to get busy on his assignments and homework. He'd been accepted, and he can now return to his studies at Foxbury. He decided to only go part-time right now, so he could be around for Filet if she needed him. He'll bring in some money by cleaning up and examining artifacts. Filet had also been teaching him to paint. Kenjo saw Filet come in. Morning, hon. Did you sleep okay? asks Kenjo. Nothing like sleeping in your own bed, am I right? Filet replied with a giggle. Agreed. Kenjo nodded. Tea's ready for you, he said as he brought it to her, as she took her seat at the table. She sipped the tea carefully. It was hot, so she blew on it a little. Thanks, she said. Kenjo finished the pancakes and placed them on a plate in the middle of the table where they each served themselves. Um, hey, hun. Kenjo said, I want to talk to you about a few things. Flay looked up from her pancakes with a start. What's wrong? Is everything okay? You're not feeling negatively about me or the baby, are you? A very concerned Flay asked. Kenjo smiles. No, nothing like that. He walks to her, takes her head into his hands, and kisses her forehead. I could never feel that way. I love you and our child. He reached down to touch her belly. More than anything, I would never want to be in this world without either one of you. Filet smiled, while trying to sniff back a tear of relief and laughed. You must think I'm a complete irrational mess right now. So, okay, what do you want to talk about? Oh, gods, of course not. We'll just talk it up to hormones, okay? He laughed, then continued. Now, two things, Kenjo said. First, I re-enrolled into Foxbury. I wanted to tell you after the fact to surprise you, and just to make sure I could get in before I said anything. But I'm back on the track for my history degree. It's not on campus, and I'm only going part-time. I could still be here for you during the pregnancy to help out around here, and for our baby. I want to become a man that our kid can look up to. I need to finish what I started, Ken just stated. Flagrant. I think that is a wonderful idea. The baby isn't due for quite some time. Finish your degree. I support this 100%. I'm so proud of you, babe. Thanks, Kenjo said while he blushed. The next thing is our home. Wow, beautiful. It's too small for our growing family. Where's the baby going to sleep? Where are they going to play when they get older? There's no room for any of it. I think we need to consider moving. I've been house hunting online, and I think I found some nice places in Sulani. I know you're going to hate it, but I think it's our best option, Kenjo said to his wife. Filet just about jumped out of her chair. Her face changed instantly to one of annoyance. Kenjo had never seen her this mad, to the point where he couldn't tell what she was feeling. No, absolutely not. I will not return to Sulani. I left my oppressive kingdom, my family, everything. How could you even think that this was a good idea? Can't we move someplace else? Filet replied angrily. But what about... Kenjo began, but was interrupted by Filet. Just no, there are no buts. My father rules Sulani. The kingdom is alive and well. I've written to him many times. But has he ever responded? No. We invited him to the wedding. Did he come? No. It's clear that I'm no longer welcome in neither the family nor Sulani. The heat here in Oasis Springs is hard on your scales. The natural glow of your skin has all but disappeared. I think for your health and for the health of our child, who is part merfolk, we need to go back. Kenjo pleaded. Blake grumbled. I'll think about it. But I will not have time to go house hunting. 
That will be on you and you alone. Don't think for a moment that I will ever reconcile with my father, she states. Flay huffed and walked out of the room to change into actual clothes, then went to her desk and started catching up on grading projects from her students that the substitute mailed to her. Kenjo yelled out to Flay in the studio. Have you even seen mailed King of Fish to tell him that he's going to be a grandpa this winter? No, and I won't. That's my final answer, Flay strongly replied. Kenjo sighed and decided to take it upon himself to write a sea mail to His Royal Highness, King Ofish of Sulani. In his letter, he wrote, Unto His Majesty the King of Sulani, Kenjo Ofish, the husband of Philae Ofish, Princess of Sulani, sends greetings. I am aware that Princess Ofish had sent several letters addressing important milestones that she had accomplished since leaving the Kingdom of Sulani. These are some of the topics she wrote about, arriving safely to the cabin, renovating and building a new home, enrollment and graduation from Brightchester University, meeting me, our wedding that was officiated by the Illuma Party, and our honeymoon in Silva Dorada. Her Royal Highness has been distressed about not receiving replies from you or her siblings. I know she's tried to spare me from her feelings regarding the situation between you two, but I know that it has been eating her up inside. We're needing to move back to Solani. Oasis Springs life is probably not the best location for her to go to. She's hard-headed and had not been wanting to see how it has been affecting her, mind and body. And now she's pregnant with your grandchild. For her sake and the sake of our baby, we need to return to Solani. Princess Ofish is vehemently against coming back, but I wanted to ask not for your forgiveness or reconciliation, but for your blessing to return to her homeland. I need to come for a few days to look at houses. I would also like to ask for an audience with your majesty and to speak with you about everything. Yours faithfully, Kenjo Yamaguchi Ofish. Will his royal highness read and respond to the sea mail? What will the king have to say? Will Kenjo be allowed audience with the king? Will he find the perfect house for them in Sulani? Will Filet agree to finally move back home? Come back next time when we will find out the answer to all of those questions and more right here on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of my uploads. Be sure to comment, rate, and share too. Be well, happy, and peaceful, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.